Uh, well, it's been a great spring. Uh, you know, uh, Coach Elliott did a great job of making the transition for me real smooth, just giving me a lot of knowledge and uh, understanding of uh, how to handle, you know, some of the guys that's in the room. Obviously, he did a great job of recruiting all those guys. So he kind of gave me some uh, some back stories of, you know, you know, their personalities. But then kind of just going through the spring and kind of just filling all the guys out for myself kind of gave me a better understanding of, how I'm gonna be able to to manage the room, so it's been great. You know, been learning a lot uh, since I since I took over uh, from uh, all these uh, veteran coaches that we have on coaching staff, and then obviously with our head coach, Coach Winnie, he's been great of just giving me some some wisdom and knowledge and some things that I can that I can have uh, to be able to help our guys uh, be successful. What's the toughest part of the transition for you? You know, you go from playing. All of a sudden, now you're leading yeah. a bunch of young men trying to do what you've done successfully yeah. in the NFL for so many years. Uh, well, I think the toughest thing is just kind of just getting these guys' mindset that you know I'm I'm not that player because they still kind of see me as that player because I'm not that far removed from playing. Uh, I think that was one of the toughest uh, things to to get them to understand. But you know, Coach Carwell did a great job of you know telling me you know make sure these guys are respecting me, calling me coach, because if you kind of let it go up under the rug, then you'll never kind of get a good grasp of your, of your position. So, you know, I just try to just go in there and just be myself and, you know, let them guys understand that, hey, I'm, I'm not that player anymore. Obviously, you know, I had a great career, but now I'm here to help you to try to go out and be successful in life. Coach, you got a lot of guys competing for playing time yeah. this season. You think with Chess's transfer, that's kind of given the, the guys who stayed kind of uh, an opportunity. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, you know, we wish Chess the best. You know, you hate to see a guy leave leave the program, uh, but you know, when he does, it does give other guys op more opportunities. Uh, and the biggest thing for us just all going to be about competition. You know, especially in the running back position. You know, it's going to take more than one person to get through the season, and you never know when your opportunity is going to come. You know, so I always tell the guys, you know, prepare just like you the starter because you never know when that time is going to come for you to be the starter. So if you're not prepared, then you know, I don't have the, the, the trust or the faith to put you out there. So, but all my guys have done a great job of that this spring, of making sure that they prepare just like they the starters, just in case we do have some some nick, some little small injuries here and there, that I can just plug you right in there and you'll be ready to go because at the end of the day, the standard's not going to change no matter who runs out there. You know, it's still going to be set at a high level. Uh, so, you know, I'm excited about that part. And, uh, you know, I'm going to do a great job of trying to manage it. All those personnel that want to get on the field, it's only one football. You know, we're not like the receivers that have, you know, you can put three guys out there. You can only put run, running back on the field. So, you know, as long as we don't let our egos get in the way or let jealousy, you know, get in there, you know, I think we'll be perfectly fine. Coach, what were your uh, overall impressions of uh, Will Shipley after a full spring? Oh, he, he's going to be real good. You know, um, Will did a great job of just coming in and just really wanting to learn. You know, he was very eager to come in and learn the playbook. Uh, he's one of those uh, those guys that sometimes you might have to pull him back a little bit because he want to learn so much, and you just want him to just take it one day at a time. Uh, but, the, you know, he come from a great foundation in his high school up there at Wellington uh, with his coach, and, you know, so you kind of see that, you know, translating over here to Clemson now. So I'm excited about seeing him grow as a player. Uh, you know, he's going to have a hopefully a, a special career uh, while he's here at Clemson. Do you think you could be a prolific return man like you were? No, I don't want him to be like me. I want him to be like Will Shipley. Uh, you know, and that's the thing that I tell him because I know that I know those comparisons going to happen. Uh, and I don't want that added pressure to him. So I just try to tell him, man, just go be Will Shipley. You know, I'm going to give him the pointers of how I seen it when I was a returner. But, you know, I don't need you to try to go and be the same returner that I was. Go be better than I was. You know, go break the, the NCAA record if that happens, you know. So I'm going to give him all the knowledge and the wisdom and kind of see, you know, the things that I've seen as a returner, but don't try to go out, be back there and try to do what I did, you know. So that's all. that's been really my biggest message to these guys this spring is just go and be yourself. You know, I don't want you to try to go be nobody else but yourself, and you know, especially when it came to Will. How is the position of the ball since you were playing here at Clemson and even in the NFL? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you see the running back position, uh, you know, guys are more involved in the passing game. You know, offensive coordinators are splitting guys out wide more. You know, you're just trying to find those mismatches uh, that you can attack uh, a defense on. Um, so that's kind of, you know, it's more of a, a spread type. You know, when I was here, you know, we were more traditional up under the center. Uh, and then and, and now these guys have all these 6'4", 6'3", 6'5", receivers. 
Well, we only had maybe six two, six foot. You know, my little my counterpart in Jacoby Ford was you know five five nine at best. Uh, so you know the game definitely does evolve, but you know that's that's great for our game because it surely it should evolve evolve, uh, and it's been great uh, to to see it uh, evolve over the last several years. This might be a simple question, but what does Clemson mean to you? Clemson mean to me? It means everything. Um, this is a place that I'd have known since 2006. You know, this is literally like a like a second home, and the people here make it so special. And I think that's uh, what makes people come here. And, and stay here and, and, and want to live here even when they're when they're done playing. Uh, I think it's just the the people here, uh, how, how well they treat you. Uh, they trying to they treat you like a like a family member, you know, cause, because it is a family. And you know that's why I decided to come here because it reminded me so much of Lake Butler, Florida. Kind of along those same lines. Obviously, there are a lot of coaches who did you know play at Clemson, and Clemson. How does that affect the dynamic of just kind of connecting with players and things like that? Say again. How does that affect the dynamic of connecting? Uh, well, the great thing is that they know that we understand that we're going to take great pride into this program. Um, so, you know, obviously, a lot of change, a lot of stuff that changed for us from like the facilities and all that stuff, but the foundation is still the same. So we're able to to relay that message because we'd have been there. You know, these these same strength coaches, some of them that's in there, they was our strength coaches. So it's a lot of ways that we can relate to these guys. Uh, we know what the, we know what the grind is like uh, on a daily basis. So. You know that I think that's why you know Coach Love uh, hiring former players because they know what the the program stands for. They know the foundation of it, and, and when you have a, a great understanding of the foundation, you can relay that message to the to the younger guys. And, and that's kind of been uh, one of my things is just really letting these guys know that I take great pride into into my school, you know, and I don't take this thing for granted. You know, you can't you know come here and just just get by. You're gonna be you're gonna be pushed uh, to the max both academically and athletically. So, you know, if those guys have an understanding of that, then they'll have a great college experience. CJ, Will came in very highly touted, obviously. Yep. Is there anything about him that has surprised you? Uh, well, I kind of caught myself going back and, and watching some high school highlights of Will, uh, just because I guess wanted to get a better, better understanding of the type of person he is. But the thing that, you know, you really – uh, that I'm really uh, struck by just the type of person that he is. You know, he's very well mannered. <clears throat> Obviously, I wasn't involved with the recruiting with Will, so you know that was you know being able to just get to know him as a person. Uh, he's very smart. Uh, he, he's about his business. You know, hopefully he won't be a guy that I have to worry about at night because uh, I know he uh, he's going to do things the right way. Uh, he has goals that he want to um, hit uh, while he's here at Clemson. You know, my job here is to try to help him achieve those goals. But just being very uh, blown away by how uh, well mannered he is. Uh, he's well advanced for his age. Uh, he has a game plan for his life. And a lot of young people don't have a game plan. They're just out here just living. Uh, but he has a game plan for his life. He knows what he, what he wants to go. Uh, you know, I don't want to say it's you know similar to my mindset when I was in high school, but it's very similar to how I was thinking when I came to Clemson of what I wanted to do, what I wanted to achieve, and I went about my business of doing it. So he kind of reminds me in that regard that he's well, well mannered and he has the, the right mindset to be a great college football player and a great student. Big Phil, yeah. Look like he had pretty good combination of size and speed. Yeah, he had, he has great combination of size and speed. You know, he's big. Uh, he can. He has very soft feet. Got, can catch the ball very well out the backfield, um, and then he's so soft-spoken. You know, he's very quiet. Uh, but you know, as the spring went on, he kind of opened up and you know loosened up to the guys, and, and that's something that we needed uh, in our room because it's going to take all of us uh, this fall uh, to, to be successful. Uh, but he's he's gonna he's gonna do a great job for us and be a, a big addition because he he's a bigger body than than all the guys in in the room. But you know, I'm excited to watch him and him and Will grow. Uh, together, you know, they kind of they kind of complement each other very well. Um, they, I mean, pretty much like brothers. They always hanging out together. So it's great when you see two young players come in and have that that mindset of, of wanting to be great and, and doing what it takes to be great. Uh, so I'm excited about just watching him grow uh, as a player and as a person.
What do you like most about this group of players? Again, you don't have that lead feature guy like ETN, like yeah. you guys have had for years. Yeah. But you have a bunch of hungry, young, potential stars yeah. in that group. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the thing that I love most about these guys, they all come come here ready to work, and they all come here ready to learn. Um, and, and that's the biggest thing that you want as a coach. You know, guys that's coming here eager to learn, uh, that, that's going to put on that, that hard hat and just go to work, uh, set their egos aside. You know, that's one of my things that I tell them. You leave your ego at the door. You pick it up on, at, uh, as you exit the, the meeting uh, because we can't have any egos in our room. You know, I'm, I'm going to push you. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to do a great job of, you know, complimenting you too, tapping me on your butt, letting you know that you've done a great job. Uh, but when we come in that meeting room, you know, it's all about business. Uh, it's all about, you know, how can we get better as a player? How can we get better as a person? You know, and these guys they did a great job of that this spring, of just coming in and just really just getting a feel for me because I'm new, you know. So they kind of had, you know, they obviously know I played the position, but it's a difference between playing the position and coaching the position. So, you know, they're trying to get a feel for, you know, how I, how I coach and how I demand things, you know, because they're hearing a different voice compared to what they'd have heard the last five to six years. You talk about that voice. Are you finding your voice as that coach? Are you more yeah. comfortable in that role? Yeah, I, I feel very comfortable in the role. I mean, it's still a long still a long road ahead of me. It's still a whole learning process for me. Um, but I'm, I'm getting more and more comfortable uh, with the role that I have. And I understand um, that this is a, uh, it's a high standard in our room. And I don't take that for granted. And I understand that, uh, you know, that, you know, each and every day that this is a blessing to be in the position that I am because not every day you get to coach at your alma mater. So for me to be able to do that, my first stop, I guess, to get my coaching career going, I, I take that to heart. I take great pride into that. You know, I don't take that for granted. So I'm going to do the best job I can uh, with it and, and, and see where it goes. What would it mean?